Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Terry Kern here and welcome to Terry Kern TV. I'm trying to do some ceramics tutorials um, for anybody who's interested. Now, the thing about throwing is there's a thousand different ways to do, well, maybe not a thousand, but there are many different ways to get to the same result. So what you see me doing may be different from what you saw a teacher doing or what another professional does. Um, that's the cool thing about throwing is everybody adapts it to how it works best for them. Um, I'm going to show you how I like to throw off the hump. A lot of people are like, well, why would you throw off the hump and what does that even mean? Um, well, I make a lot of miniature little vessels and I make shot glasses and tiny little cocktail cups and it can be very hard to take like a third of a pound of clay, throw it on, the, on your wheel head and center it just to throw something very tiny. So I have this hump of clay and I'm gonna throw probably three or four pieces off this little hump of clay, hence throwing off the hump. So when I like to get started, I'm gonna get my wheel going. I have a tiny little piece of clay here. I'm gonna get a dip in water and I'm actually gonna create a target for myself uh, with this little bit of wet clay. And that's gonna give me something to aim at when I'm throwing my clay onto the wheel head. And we'll see how close I get. Um, I think I got like a D in archery when I went to summer camp. So don't expect too much, but here we go. Eh, I'm gonna give myself, I am 25% uh, off center. So I'm just gonna kind of squidge it like this. And then I'm just gonna tap it down just like this pretty hard with my hand because I really want that hump of clay to connect to the wheel head. Now I'm gonna get my hands a little bit wet and I have some nice warm water in here. I'm a little bit older than maybe some of you are, so I like warm water to put my hands in. Maybe that was a little too much water. I always like, these are my towel chaps. I always like to have these when I'm throwing. And I'm gonna just try and tap that hump of clay on center just a little bit. And now I have uh, even just the beginning of a cone. For those of you who center, you know that coning up and coning down is very important. So here we go, kids. Put on your seat belts and let's take a ride. So I'm going to, this is called coning up. And you can see that what I'm doing with my hands is I'm actually making a small cylinder and my hands are coming up like this. And next I'm gonna press my hands down to move the clay down. And this is all part of the centering practice. I want you to notice that I have my elbows wedged in at my waist. So I'm pressing in with my left hand and pressing down with my right hand. And this is how you get something centered. Now I'm just, I'm just gonna get this mostly centered because what I'm gonna be working on is centering small sections of the clay. But I like to get it generally centered when I start. And now I'm gonna go back down. And I'm exerting a fair amount of pressure and it usually takes me three or four times of coning the clay up, which is what I'm doing now. And then coning the clay down. Again, centering is just trying to get all the little clay molecules, which, and this is a fun fact, clay molecules are called platelets because they're shaped like little plates. I learned that in school. Okay, now I'm exerting a fair amount of pressure and I'm just gonna cone it up one more time. And that's gonna get me, like I said, mostly centered. And now I'm gonna cone back down. And I'm gonna get to just about this point. Now you can see I'm a wet thrower. I throw with a lot of water. That's just my style. So I'm now gonna throw like a little shot glass. So. I'm actually gonna take my hands and you can see I'm starting in right kind of here and I'm just going to once again center up, cone up and cone down. And I'm gonna center just this little tiny part at the top. So I'm coning up and I'm coning down. And again, I want you to notice how much, you can see that the top of this is now pretty well centered. I'm going to go for three times because three is my favorite number. Again, everybody does their own kind of thing when they throw. You find out what works best for you and you do it. And I want you to notice how still and strong my hands are. I never want to take my hands or put, put it on the clay or take it off of the clay without the wheel going around. 
and that's because it's very easy to throw your piece off center. So now that I have my little ball, I'm actually going to make my opening. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water here and I like to use my thumb and my middle finger and I'm just gonna press in here and this is making my opening. And then I am going to bring my finger and my thumb back and forth a few times. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to compress the clay in the bottom of my piece. I'm gonna get a little sponge. I'm gonna press right here at the top and that's just again to compress that clay and now I'm going to go back in with my sponge and using a fair amount of pressure I'm actually going to go back and forth on the interior and again I'm compressing what's going to be the interior of my little tiny glass well when I say little tiny it's not going to be super tiny it's going to be medium tiny so it'll be a, a couple inches tall now I'm getting ready to collar up and this is where the magic happens of throwing. I think watching someone bring the walls of a piece up, that's when it looks super cool to me. So again, I like to throw with a lot of water. So I'm going to have my finger on the inside and a finger on the outside. And I'm slowly gonna start to throw up. I know that sounds funny. I'm not literally throwing up, but I'm bringing my walls up. And I'm gonna start to decrease my wheel speed a little bit. I like to compress my lip just about after every throw. I'm going to take my sponge and pull some of the water from the inside. And I'm going to once again bring some more of that clay up. And I'm going to slowly slow down my wheel speed as I do that. And you can see that I'm bringing the clay up just like that. Now I'm going to carefully take my fingers off. I'm going to again take my wet sponge and I'm going to compress the lip of my piece and there's a little bit of water in there I'm actually going to put this in here and soak up any of that excess water now I'm going to throw it one more time I know I keep saying I'm going to throw it up one more time but you know what I mean I know there's a better word for that but because of my age I can't think of what that is right now so here we go and now I'm really going to bring it up And I'm going to be slowing my speed down just a little bit. There we go. Again, compressing the lip. That's so important. Getting ex excess water. And I'm going to give it one more throw. Now, something you probably can't see from the outside is when I'm when I have my fingers on the inside before I start to pull the the walls up. I'm actually moving my finger out and then I'm going up because I'm continuing to create a wider bottom on the inside of my piece. I'm gonna just do it one more time. Now I've got my nice little shape. I'm gonna again take my sponge and soak up any leftover water that's down here at the bottom on the inside. And I'm gonna compress my lip again. Some people like to use um, different substances to do this. I kind of like this little sponge. And I like to look at my piece from the side. So I think this is nice. It's got a nice little dimple in the middle and I'm gonna pull a little bit of water off that outside. Now, I know that I already have the design for this piece in mind. I'm gonna be throwing uh, my series of Sister Mary cocktail cups. Sister Mary Manhattan, Sister Mary Martini, Sister Mary Sidecar, et cetera, et cetera. And because they have a woman on them, I like to give them a little bit of a womanly curve. So all of that stuff is in my head as I'm throwing so that my design idea and the design for my shape are kind of working together as I'm actually creating the piece. And I call that making work with intent. You know what's gonna go on on the outside of the piece, so that kind of informs the way you create your form. Now, I'm gonna take this bad boy. Could be a bad girl, but for right now, I'm gonna call it a bad boy. 
and I like this tool a lot. I'm just going to make a little tiny wedge here. And I've created a space right here, and this is where I'm going to cut the piece off the wheel head. Again, I like to get everything wet before it touches the clay, so this is my throwing wire. I guess it's a cutoff wire. And I'm just going to sit it here, and then I'm going to start my wheel going around, and I'm just going to bring it right through the bottom of the piece, like that. I'm going to use this slightly larger wooden tool. I'm just going to get it wet, and then I'm just going to pry this bad boy right off the wheel head. Ta-da! This is called throwing off the hump. And you can create lots of different size cups and bowls and shot glasses. They can be tall or, or skinny or short or fat. You can do bowls this way as well. One of the things I like to do before I throw is get an idea in my head of the shape that I want to throw. So this is actually uh, one of my little um, cocktail cups that was over fired. So you can see it doesn't exactly look great but it's got a little bit of a soft curve to it. So this is kind of the idea that I have in my head before I sit down to throw. That always helps me. Sometimes I'll actually get the piece and sit it right on my wheel head so I have something to refer to. Because sometimes when you're throwing, your mind goes off into other places and you really have to concentrate on what you're doing. You can throw all kinds of shapes. This is also a shape that I threw off the hump. So you can see this, this shape is really tall and skinny. And you can sh throw bigger shapes. This is a little... Um, cup that I made. Um, this is about was about my New Year's resolutions about things that I wanted to eat less of like, you know, alcohol, watch less TV, eat, eat less hamburgers, read less Pulp Fiction. And then on the bottom, I have potato chips and French onion dip, which is the Terry Kern kryptonite. Um, anyway, so again, it's important to have an idea of the shape you want to throw. It'll really help inform your throwing. And I think it makes your throwing go much quicker because you have a plan. And in this particular case, I'll be throwing off the hump. And these are the type of tools that I like to use. So take note of these. If you don't have any of them, they're great to have. I use a variety of sponges. I like these big sponges. And when I'm throwing small, I use these small, thin, natural sponges. Uh, something that's a must is you need your cutoff tool. And this is a heavy gauge wire. Some people I know like to use um, clear fishing line and two um, uh, nuts nuts and they tie the fishing line to either side so you've got something to to, pull, to cut your piece off the wheel head i have a variety of these wooden tools these are super cool and they work very effectively um, different sizes different shapes and one of the most important tools of all if i can find it i where did it go ah here it is Needle tool. Needle tools are really important. You use needle tools for all different kinds of things to cut off your lip. Some people like to use needle tools to check the depth of their clay. Um, so these are really invaluable. I have like a kajillion of these and I'm not kidding. Um, so those are the tools that I like to use when throwing these small pieces. When I throw bigger pieces, I have, you know, other kinds of ribs, metal ribs. These are great for skimming all the wet clay off the surface of the piece that you're throwing. I like to use wooden tools if I'm trying to get something that is got a straight um, side. I'll just plunk this on the wheel head and use this as a guide to help me get something really straight. So these appropriately called tools are great because they can really help you get the shapes that you want to get when you're throwing on the wheel. So again, thanks for tuning in to check out the tools that I use to throw off the hump. And I hope you'll tune in again soon to Terry Kern TV. See you later. The other thing that's really important is you want to make sure that you have several pieces of already wedged clay. Um, depending on how much time I have, I like to have at least four pieces of wedged clay. Sometimes it can go up as to as many as eight or ten, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, the more you have everything's pre everything prepared and ready to go, the easier it is to really be effective in your studio. Um, you know, if, if you throw an entire uh, ball of clay and then you're like oh I only have that one ball of clay then you have to get up you have to drive your hands you have to get clay out you have to wedge it then you have to come back to your wheel but to work most effectively I like to get all those uh, balls of clay wedged up first I put them in a plastic bag like this and I use a spray bottle of water to spray in here to keep them nice and moist and as they're sitting there that moisture is just penetrating the clay as I work on the pieces that are on my wheel. So that makes sure that the clay is nice and pliant and easy to mold with my hands uh, once I start throwing.
The other thing that I like to do when I'm throwing is I like to have a clear image of the shape that I'm trying to throw. So whether I do a drawing beforehand and stick it uh, with a push pin and a board and put that in front of my uh, wheel or whether or not I have an actual little piece, I, ha I like to have something to refer to when I'm throwing. Um, it just kind of helps me work more effectively. I find it also helps to have an idea of the design that I want to paint on the surface of the piece because that will inform uh, the shape that I end up throwing. The other thing that I love to do when I'm throwing is I like warm water. Uh, the older I get, the more crickety my joints get. So I always start uh, throwing with a nice clean bucket of warm water and that just feels so much better to me when I'm throwing. So that's a handy dandy little trick that might help you. It certainly helped me. So again, thanks for tuning in to some, some throwing tips and thanks for watching Terry Kern TV. Have a great day in your studios. Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking out my latest YouTube video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the little subscribe button right there at the bottom and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you hit the little bell notification, then every time I publish something new, you'll be notified. So that's pretty cool. And if you know someone who you think might be interested in the video, feel free to share it with them and help me spread how cool ceramics is around the world. Thanks so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Till next time!